next. In second place, a ship whose flight deck is longer than three football fields, refuels once every 13 years, and whose power is unmatched anywhere in the world. Nimitz class, aircraft carrier. Displacement, 97,000 tons. Propulsion, two nuclear reactors driving four turbines producing 260,000 horsepower. Speed, 30 knots. Range, unlimited. Protection, none. Principal armament, 85 aircraft. Crew, 5,680. In 1975, the largest warship ever built was commissioned into the U.S. Navy. Called the Nimitz, this aircraft carrier was the first in its class of 10 ships. When the final one comes into service, they will have a combined displacement of just under a million tons. But it's not just weight alone that makes them the largest. The Nimitz class carriers have awesome dimensions. 1,092 feet in length, 252 in width, its flight deck has an area of four and a half acres that can facilitate over 85 aircraft. And with a crew of over 5,600, the Nimitz class were a rapid departure from recognized carrier tactics. The Navy decided that carriers had to go solo in the maritime strategy of the 1980s. The carrier plus its battle group would operate as an autonomous unit, whether that was for crisis response, diplomatic forward presence, or as part of a major war in Europe. With the demise of the Soviet Union in 1991, the threat of the Cold War vanished, and the Nimitz-class carrier's role changed to one of peacekeeper throughout the world. Today, the appearance of a U.S. Navy carrier off your shores, if you're a friend of the U.S., tells you that the U.S. is there backing you. If you're an opponent of the U.S., tells you that we're, we're interested in changing your policy. And it's this ability to go anywhere in the world at a moment's notice and at a speed of over 30 knots that makes the Nimitz class invaluable to the U.S. Navy. But what makes the Nimitz class unique is its two nuclear reactors that enables them to roam the world indefinitely. For the first time, you have a fighting ship that is not limited by fuel. It's not limited by the need to take on water as the 18th century fleets did. It's limited really only by aviation ordnance and some other critical supplies. So with underway replenishment, the Nimitz class can remain at sea almost indefinitely. Apart from its aircraft, each ship can pack a huge punch in their own right with NATO Sea Sparrow launchers, 20 millimeter phalanx mounts, and the RIM-116 rolling airframe missiles. But it was by using its aircraft in the Afghanistan conflict that demonstrated just how powerful the Nimitz class was as a fighting ship. The Navy kept carriers in place off Afghanistan consistently, and it was only the Navy that was able to provide fighter cover for air superiority. That was needed in Afghanistan so that helicopters, transports, and bombers could operate over Afghan airspace. And again, the Nimitz class were there for Iraqi freedom, doing what they do best, supplying an attacking platform for its formidable air wing. There's no doubt that the Nimitz class carriers are the most powerful warships ever to sail the seas. And the reason for that rests in the abilities of their air wings. Because of their size and capability, the U.S. has committed them to the service books for the foreseeable future. And it is a future that could go on and on. There will come a time, in a decade's time, a decade and a half's time, when there will be a new rising challenge to the United States. The maritime power projection will still be from the carrier, from its 90 or so strike aircraft. And that's why you've got to keep them. You can't afford to lose them. The Nimitz class are undoubtedly one of the finest ships ever built. So for innovation and fear factor, score high on our matrix. With a service length of over 20 years, it has to score high, as does its protection rating. But it is their firepower of 85 aircraft that goes off the scale and pushes them into second place of our top 10 fighting ships.